Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture in the hands on large language models series. In the previous lecture, we have been looking at how to use language models for the purposes of text classification. In particular, we have looked at this Rotten Tomatoes movie review data set, which we obtained from Hugging Face. And the goal was to use a language model to classify whether the movie review is a positive movie review or it's a negative movie review. This has been an awesome set of lectures because we have used several language models to perform the same task. In particular, we have looked at representative language models and we have looked at generative language models. In the representative language models itself, we have looked at two types of representative models. The first is task specific models and the second is embeddings. In task specific models, essentially we have a model which is already pre-trained plus fine tuned on some specific task. And then we use this same model for our task of movie review classification. So in this case, we used a model which took its base as the Roberta and then it was fine tuned on 125 million tweets. We use this pre-trained plus fine tuned model on our task of classifying movie reviews into positive or negative. And we achieved an, an accuracy and of 80% and an F1 score of 0.8. That's pretty awesome because a model which was pre-trained and fine tuned on some other data set was used successfully on the movie reviews data set. That's one advantage of dealing with language, dealing with sentences, text and words. Words carry meaning, sentences carry meaning. And that meaning usually does not change too much from one data set to another data set. For example, the meaning of let's say dog and let's say puppies might always come together with each other. This kind of an advantage is not present in images. That's why when we train or pre-train on the Twitter data set, we learn some things. We learn what is generally a positive sentiment, what is generally a negative sentiment. And that same learning is then transferred to our movie reviews data set. The second type of representative model which we looked at is embeddings. What happens in this type of models is that every movie review is converted into a higher dimensional vector. And that vector encodes all the information about the movie review itself. Then that's the first stage. The first stage of this is converting the movie reviews into a higher dimensional vector space. And then we apply a traditional ML model such as logistic regression to make the final classification. So fine tuning is not needed in the representative models, unlike task specific models. That's the advantage of using uh, representative embedding models. In embeddings, fine tuning is not needed, unlike task specific models. Um, and for the embedding model, we used a sentence to sentence transformer coupled with logistic regression. The second type of language models, which we looked at in the previous lecture is generative language models. Within that, we looked at a model called as T5. When T5 was developed, it was pre-trained plus fine tuned. And uh, in the pre-training, instead of masking individual tokens, a set of tokens were masked and then the model's task was to fill in the, the gaps. That's why it's a generative model since it's generating new tokens. And the fine tuning is where the real magic happens. Because instead of fine tuning on a single sentence to sentence task, the T5 model was fine tuned on a wide range of tasks such as text translation, grammar discovery, text summarization, etc. Flan T5 is a much advanced version of T5 because it introduced more than 1000 tasks during fine tuning. We saw that even with T5 and Flan T5, we got an amazing accuracy and F1 score on this text classification task. So if you look at all these three types of models, which we have seen the task specific representative model, the embeddings, the representative models and the T5 or Flan T5 generative model, all of them really come under the category of open source model. We downloaded these models from Hugging Face. All the information of these models is publicly available. And then we use these models to achieve a good accuracy and to do our task of movie review classification perfectly. The goal of today's lecture is to use chat GPT to achieve the task of classifying the movie review data set into positive or negative. 
the way it differs from the previous lecture is that we are going to use a use a closed source model today we are not going to use an open source model through this lecture my aim is to demonstrate to you that to do the same task open source model and closed source models both can be used it's up to the user to compare the advantages and disadvantages of both of them and use which one suits best their requirements today i'm going to show you the framework for how to use closed source models like chat gpt to classify movie reviews as positive movie review or negative movie review so let's get started with today's lecture all right so the first thing to understand is that when we are using chat gpt the underlying language model which we are going to use is gpt 3.5 since this model is closed source open ai has not released too much public information about how this model was developed what are the weights what are the architecture etc however we do know some details one detail which we know is that open ai used preference fine tuning for developing this model and this method of fine tuning is a bit different than instruction fine tuning so what happens in preference fine tuning is that let's say we give a prompt to the llm such as explain llms then there are three options the first option is let's say an abbreviation for the master of laws the second is i am not familiar with this prompt and the third option is large language models or artificial intelligent models etc what the step which happens in preference fine tuning which is not there in instruction fine tuning is that human labelers will rank the output so in this case output c will have a higher rank than output b and output b will have a higher rank than output a the goal of preference fine tuning is for the generative model to generate the preferred output given the prompt so the generative model also has information about which of these answers the human prefers and it has to generate the preferred output based on the prompt the difference with instruction fine tuning is that this preferred word is not there mm -hmm. the model has to generate output based on the prompt the advantage which this brings to the table is that now the language model has some information about what humans prefer as responses and that's why gpt 3.5 became so famous as a consumer product preference fine tuning really helps the llm to align its responses based on human preferences and this is what we know behind this is the architecture or i should say the concept which we know was used behind the development of gpt 3.5 however we don't need to know too many details when using a closed source model as i told you before closed source models are treated as like black boxes you make a request to the model without knowing the nuts and bolts without knowing the underlying architecture and the model gives you a response and that's the response which you have to use all right the second thing which i want to mention is that the way we interface or access a closed source model is very different than we than the way we access or interface with open source models if you remember the way we interfaced with open source models we just downloaded the model from hugging face we downloaded the data from hugging face and we just ran the model on google collab but using closed source models the model itself is not available on hugging face so then how are we going to get the responses for from the model that's when something called as an api or application programming interface comes into the picture the simplest way to think of an api is that it's a messenger between two applications in this case application number 1 is our google collab notebook where we are writing a code which takes in movie reviews and classifies them into positive or negative in the code we will reach a stage where we will pass in the movie reviews to a model and then we want the model to say whether it's positive or negative so then what we'll do is that we will deploy a messenger which is also called as an api that messenger will go to application number 2 in this case application number 2 is chat gpt or open ai that api will go to open ai and then it will say that hey application 1 has asked this request from you can you fulfill this request if you have an api key open ai will fulfill that request and then the messenger will bring back the response to application 1 which then you can use in your google collab and you can finish the code the simplest way i like to think about api or application programming interface is that in the olden days when people wanted to communicate information they gave the message to a pigeon 
the pigeon flew from one place to wherever it was meant to be and then the pigeon collected the response and then brought it back it's similar to api api is like a messenger between two applications but to use the api itself to send the messenger or to deploy the messenger you need an api key and to have the api key or to deploy the messenger you need to spend money that's the whole business model behind closed source companies like open ai the more api calls you make the more money you will incur when you join open ai as i will show you or when you create an account on open ai the first few api calls will be free to you but later open ai will start charging you so big companies when they integrate open ai api into so many of their products they are being charged by open ai and the charges can be massive if you make a huge number of requests this is the way you have to interface with open ai in the code right and uh, in the code there will come a time when we will need something which is called as an api key so now i'm going to show you how to create an account on open ai and how to generate that api key so let's go to a page which is called as platform.openai.com and i'm going to sign out here so that i can show you the exact process from the start if you already have an account with open ai you can sign in with google but if you don't have an account you can sign up and then you can log in through google so i'm going to continue with google right now it's a pretty simple process once you log in you will see a screen like this and if you get your icon here it's a sign that you have successfully logged in then what you have to do is that you have to click on the dashboard at the top right and then on the left hand side you will see several sections such as chat completions assistant batches evaluation fine tuning storage usage and api key what we are really interested is in the api key so you click on the api key and then you will see that as an owner of this project you can manage and view all api keys so then you click on create new secret key and give a name to your key so i am going to say movie reviews text completion and then you click on create secret key what this will do is that it will create an api key for you which you can copy and this is the key which we are going to use in our code so i am going to click on done here few things which i would like to mention over here is that if you click on the usage tab over here you can monitor the usage and how how much api key you have used when you join open ai or when you create an account you will have 5 dollars of free credits so use it wisely later you will be charged and your monthly bill will be set over here so the question would be how much does open ai charge for making an api call or to send the messenger once right so they have this pricing page if you go to openai.com/api/pricing you will see that if you look at the latest model gpt4 o the price is 2.5 dollars per 1 million input tokens what does one token mean they have written it over here so you can think of tokens as pieces of words where roughly 1000 tokens is about 750 words for the sake of simplicity for now you can assume one token to be equal to one word so for 1 million input words in your input to open ai the price will be 2.5 dollars for gpt4 o however for today for today's code we are going to use a we are not going to use an advanced model like gpt4 o but we are going to use gpt 3.5 turbo 0 1 2 5 where the price is 0.50 dollars per 1 million token so you will see that the price of gpt 3.5 turbo is five times lower than the latest gpt 4 o on this page if you explore further you will see that you have image models you have assistants api you you also have fine tuning so if you want to do fine tuning the cost is a bit higher then uh, normal api call for inference then there are embedding models also so as i mentioned we are going to use this model uh, gpt 3.5 turbo in the code we will also need to specify which model to use and when i share the code with you you can feel free to explore with different models also no need to stick to this model because you will definitely fall within the 5 dollars free credit limit for the code which i am going to show you now let's go to google collab and let's start implementation of our code all right so we are on the google collab interface now and the title which i have given to this section is chat gpt for classification we have already downloaded 
or copied the open ai key in the previous part uh, and now we are ready to execute this code you will need two packages the first is the data sets package from hugging face and the second is the open ai package you can run this command pip install data sets and open ai and once the packages are installed you can move ahead after the packages are installed the next step is to load the data set so what we are going to do is that we are going to import the load data set command and we are going to put rotten tomatoes what this will do is that it will load this rotten tomatoes movie data set and you can print out the data we will see that the training has 8530 movie reviews and the validation and testing has around 1066 movie reviews so if you go to the data set page you will see that this exactly matches 8530 in the training and around 1070 in the validation and testing so this is an indication that the data set has been downloaded correctly right now we can move to the next step the next step is interfacing with open ai so here you have to put the api key and essentially you have to deploy this messenger to go to open ai and to collect the response so the way to do this is first to create a client and that can be done through the open ai package so the command here is open ai dot open ai and then you have to mention your api key here I have deliberately not typed the API key because it's it's good for privacy reasons if you don't expose the API key in the Google Colab code. But the way to do it is that you go to the API keys and whatever API key you have downloaded or you created here, you copy it and you paste it within these inverted commas, right? So after running this part, it means that you have created an OpenAI client or the messenger which will go to OpenAI, give the request and come back. In the next code or in the next section, we have to mention what is the message which the API is going to deliver. So when the messenger goes to open AI, it has to say something, right? This is the task you have to perform. What's the task which the messenger is going to say to open AI? And this task is mentioned in this function called chat GPT generation. This function takes in a prompt and it takes in our document. And here we also have to specify a model. As I mentioned to you here, the model which we are using is GPT 3.5 Turbo 0125. You can feel free to explore with all the other models over here. Right, so I have mentioned the model name as GPT 3.5 Turbo 0125. And uh, you have to mention messages also. So here you have to mention that based on the prompt, this is what you have to generate. So what I'm doing here is that the final command which we have is client.chat.completions.create. This is given by OpenAI itself and you can actually see it on their, um, on their tutorial page. Let me see. So text generation, right? So if you see, if you go to text generation, the main command which they have is .chat.completion.create. And here you have to mention the model and you have to give a prompt and then it creates a response. So here we are using a similar thing client.chat.completions.create and client is what we have defined earlier and here we have to mention the messages which is the prompt and the model right so messages have been mentioned over here which means that we are telling openai that you are a helpful assistant and then from the user side we are giving a prompt the prompt will essentially be generate an output based on a prompt and an input document and then the document will be this which will feed in later. So when we call the chat GPT generation function later, what will happen is that it will take in the document, which will be the movie review. And then the prompt will be to uh, predict whether the following document is a positive or negative movie review. So we are going to give a prompt later when we call this function and that prompt is going to be predict whether the following document is positive or negative movie review and the document is that it will go through every single movie review and if you look at the messages we have to mention a role so for open ai the role is that you are a helpful assistant and from the user side we will give the prompt so uh, wherever there is this string named as document in the prompt it will be replaced with the actual document so you'll see that when we give a prompt, there will be the string named as document, which will be replaced with the actual movie review. And then if the movie review is positive, return one. And if it's negative, return zero. Do not give any other answers. So the answer will either be one or it will be zero. So to work from it backwards, let's say we have a document such as this. 
unpretentious, charming, quirky and original. Let's say that this is the movie review. We'll call chat GPT generation using a prompt and a document. So the prompt is this predict whether the following document is positive or negative. There is a string named as document. If it is positive return one and if it is negative return zero. We'll pass this prompt and we'll pass this document to the chat GPT generation function. What this function will do is that it will first create messages. So for open AI, the role and the content is clear from our side in the content. Whatever the prompt is, the string name document will be replaced with the actual document. So here it will replace it with this actual document. And uh, the answer will be one if it's positive movie review or zero if it's negative, right? So that's what's happening. And the final code is client.chat.completions.create messages. It will take these messages. Model is GPT 3.5 turbo 0, 1 to 5 and temperature is equal to 0. So temperature, I like to think of temperature as creativity index. The more temperature you have, the more variability you have in the output. But right now we are putting temperature as 0 because I'm just showing a simple demonstration of how to use the uh, chat GPT API. The key thing to remember is this dot chat dot completions dot create. That's where all the magic happens. So dot chat dot completions dot create and you have to mention your client here so client dot chat dot completions dot create and within this you have to put your messages which are this you have to mention the model which is this and you can mention some other things such as temperature etc and then the return is dot choices dot message dot content so zero is which, which means the response with the top probability that's chosen um, and that also would be mentioned over here. So completion dot choices dot message. That's the format in which the output will be generated. Right. So this is the function which is defined and then this is the prompt and uh, here is my sample document. So if you run the code for the sample document, you will get the answer equal to one because this indeed looks like a positive review, right? If, if a movie review has words like charming, quirky and original, it means that the movie review is likely to be positive. This shows that our model is actually performing well. And the next step is to run the run this code on the entire movie reviews data set. So what we are going to do now is that uh, we are going to take the document in the testing data and we are going to look at text because if you look at the way the data is structured in, 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 in the key name text, there is the movie review. So we are going to go through the testing data. We are going to go through every movie review and we are going to pass the movie review into uh, the prompt and the document. So then essentially we are going to call this function for all of the movie reviews and then the output will be generated. Uh, so now this will run for 1066 records in the testing data set. Make sure that your balance is not finished with this. I have tried this so it does not lead to too much depletion of your $5 free credit. Uh, but always keep an eye out for how much credits you are exhausting in the dashboard and in the usage part. Right. So uh, when you run this, you will see that I have put this progress bar. So you will see the you can monitor the progress and you can see that for me it took around seven minutes to run the API call on 101066 testing data. So what's what's happening in that part of this code is that we are sending this messenger. We are deploying this messenger 1067 times. Uh, for each movie review, it goes and predicts whether it's positive or negative. Then it goes again, then it goes again. This continues till we do it for all the movies in the testing data. And then like we did earlier, we can print out the evaluation metrics such as uh, precision, recall, F1 score, etc. So just note the accuracy of the testing data here. We get an accuracy of 91% and the F1 score of 0.91. This is much higher than earlier methods of representation and generation. So using T5 and Flan T5 here, we use T5 here and we got an accuracy of 0.84. Whereas with the closed source model, we got an accuracy of 0.91. This is the trade-off which I was mentioning. You can use open source models which won't cost you anything, but sometimes the performance won't be good. If you're fine with this much reduction in performance, go ahead with open source model. But if you want to have a production ready setting where you want the best performance, you can see clearly here that 
the closed source gpt model has an awesome performance 91% is the testing accuracy and an f1 score of 0.91 the precision and recall values are also very high for negative reviews the precision is a bit lower so this can be improved and for positive reviews the recall is a bit lower so that also can be improved but overall i would say the performance of chat gpt on this task is awesome and that's why this has become hugely popular among users this tool chat gpt because it really works and it works very well okay so this brings us to the end of this lecture where we used uh, google collab linked it with chat gpt api and used this api to perform text classification on a movie review dataset which consisted of 1066 testing data samples and we actually got a response or a result which is much better than the previous methods which we tried task task specific representative embeddings representative and t5 flan t5 generative with this lecture we have now explored four methods of generating the same or doing the same task two methods in the representative category then in the generative we looked at t5 flan t5 and today we looked at another method in generative and that is chat gpt which is closed source all other users they would just be aware of chat gpt but through this lecture series i want to give you a flavor of all the different types of language models which you can use in a hands on manner and they are not just generative but representative models also do a good job one thing i would like to mention is that when you use the chat gpt api uh, sometimes you may get something which is called as the rate limit error so rate limit error happens when you are using so many api calls um and you are timed out and there is a specific way to deal with rate limit error uh let me plate rate limit error rate limit error mitigation so if you go to this page uh here you will see that one easy way to avoid rate limit errors is to automatically retry requests with a random exponential back off this means that you can perform a short sleep when a rate limit error is reached and then retry the unsuccessful request this is a bit of an advanced setting but i wanted to mention it because when i tried api for the first time i used to encounter this rate limit errors a lot but doing this exponential back off which is performing a short sleep cycle and then resuming the requests again that helps there are several other techniques which can help and have been mentioned in this documentation i'll share with uh, share these links with you in the information section of this video so thank you so much everyone in the next video we'll start looking at clustering and again we'll explore several language models for clustering in this video till this video we have completed text classification and next we'll move on to clustering thanks so much everyone and i look forward to seeing you in the next lecture